Hello, folks. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of the GOAT series. I'm your host, Jeremy Hadley, and today I am going to be talking about the greatest Commanders player of all time in franchise history up to this point right now. Now, let me go over the rules like I always do on every episode, and we are coming back from the Eagles episode with Dr. Mudrick, and now we're heading to the Commanders episode, which is here. But let's remind you of the rules here, folks. I choose five candidates who I think is the greatest Commanders player of all time in franchise history up to this point, and also have honorable mention, and I'll get to honorable mention in a little bit. The criteria I always look for is the stats with the team, their tenure with the team, their accomplishments with the team, and how they were on and off the field and what, what they were like. And to honorable mention, we always have we, – when we have a guest, we allow them to have honorable mention. But in this episode, we don't have a guest. So we're going to keep the honorable mention is one person here for my list here, folks. So we're going to get to it. But before I start with my honorable mention, make sure you leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. We're already at 300 subs. Let's get it more. Let's get it going here, folks. And continuing with the GOAT series as we started from the NFC North with the Packers, Bears, Lions, Vikings, and now we just have the Eagles. Now we head to the Commanders. For honorable mention, I have is Art Monk. Played 14 seasons for Washington. He's a Hall of Famer, three-time Super Bowl champion. Nice to get some Super Bowl rings there. One-time first-team All-Pro, one-time second-team All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowler, one-time NFL receptions leader. He made the Washington Ring of Fame also, folks. His stats, folks, with the commanders I mentioned before, he had over 888 receptions, had 12,026 receiving yards, 65 receiving TDs. He was a big wide receiver, and he also made the Hall of Fame, if I did not mention that already. He was very strong, very huge, muscular guy, very intelligent with a high IQ, and he was very soft-spoken, too. Now, the things that stick out to me of Art Monk's game was he was a great route runner. He made those crucial catches when needed to in late in the game to make the game-winning catch if it had to, whether it's a first down, where he gets some yards, or get the touchdown and run the clock down and win the game for them. But he was very good in those situations, very good in situations, and he was a reliable target for quarterbacks, very consistent and very professional, very professional on and off the field. And he was also very involved in the community too, which is something nice. And I think that needs to be recognized a little bit here, folks, because most of the time when we're doing this, it's usually on the field, but we don't talk about off the field stuff, of what they accomplish, just how involved in the community. I think that's a nice touch for Art Monk. That's going to be bonus points of why I put him here for honorable mention, but also being a reliable target for quarterbacks. Like when I think of guys today that were kind of similar to that, whether it was like terrible quarterbacks and they would just be your number one guy, you throw to, he'd be good for you. And why I see that sticks out to me today is DeAndre Hopkins. You go look at the quarterbacks DeAndre Hopkins has besides Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson. The rest were terrible. The rest of those quarterbacks were terrible for Houston especially. But Art Monk definitely deserves to be honorable mention on this list for me, especially with having those three Super Bowls, those first team and second team all pros, and being a one-time NFL receptions leader. And also, those stats are pretty impressive, especially back in his day. That's pretty impressive. So I got to put Art Monk here on my list, ladies and gentlemen. Next player on my list is Chris Hamburger. The Hangman, ladies and gentlemen, is his nickname. Played 14 seasons with Washington. He's a Hall of Famer. Five first team all pros. Five. That's insane. One second team all pro. Nine time pro bowler. Nine time pro bowler. Washington Ring of Fame. His stats, folks, which again, some of those stats were not officially recorded back in his time when he played, which were 19 interceptions, 17 fumble recoveries, 45 sacks. Now, the thing that really sticks out to me with him is his versatility, his leadership, his intelligence, speed, very hard-hitting, dominated at his position, and arm tackle. Really tackle, give him the bear hugs, all of that. And with Chris Hamburger, it's, those are some of the things that really sticks out to me. Like, he would dominate his position, and that shows you in the first team and second team of pros and how consistent he was with those Pro Bowls. But just helping out with the Washington, just trying to get him over the hump, whether they need a guy badly on that team to help them like bring some hope. He was one of the guy, he was one of the guys that bring him hope. And he was very, very impressive at his position. Just reading about him and how good he was of just being that locker room guy of like got to pump some guys up, motivate them. And it helped Washington out a bit. And his hard hitting side was something that always sticks out to me. And he was ferocious out there, very ferocious and dominated too. So I got to put Chris Hamburger up here in my list, folks. Definitely deserves, especially when your nickname's the Hangman. Very impressive to see that. Next on list is Diesel. That is John Regans. His nickname is Diesel or Rigo. Played nine seasons for Washington. He's a one-time Super Bowl champion, one-time Super Bowl MVP, one-time NFL Comeback Player of the Year, one first-team All-Pro, one Pro Bowler, two-time Russian TDs leader, 
He made the Washington Ring of Fame. His stats, folks, 7,472 rushing yards, 79 rushing TDs, 121 receptions, 928 receiving yards, six receiving TDs, and over 8,400 total scrimmage yards. Pretty impressive to see him involved in the pass game and especially in the running game is what he's known for. But his nickname, the Diesel, because he was very big and powerful and he would just break tackles and just run over guys. He just run over guys. Had six receiving TDs and a total of 8,400 total scrimmage yards. He was very involved in the passing game too, folks. But especially his running game is what sticks out to me a lot because he played the running back position. But getting involved in the passing game as a running back is hard to do. I mean, I know it's very pass-heavy today's football game, but back then, you rarely saw that. You rarely saw that. And his nickname, as I mentioned before, the Diesel, comes from being a powerful running back and just break through guys, break the tackles, and just run over them. And a player that always reminds me of that is Derrick Henry, because especially the stiff arm, but how powerful Derrick Henry was. But back to John Regans, he really used that style of being very powerful and physical, going after guys, just being that workhorse, and just get being especially crucial in the short yardage you need to be a yard or two short of first down, or you're on the goal line, you need to get in to get the game-winning touchdown or get the lead. He was that guy, and he knocked in a lot, and he was just able to break those tackles and knock himself over, get the first down, or get the touchdown. That's some of the things that stick out to me, especially about his game, which I love. And Washington wouldn't have as many Super Bowls as they have today because John Riggins won the Super Bowl as he was a Super Bowl MVP. It was a big part of winning that Super Bowl for the Washington, so that was a big – boost why I want to give him a recognition up here. Definitely a great player, but absolutely one of the best in Washington's franchise history. Given the names of the team names, I'm going to stick with Washington, folks. I'm sticking with that. Next on our list is Sling Sammy. Who is Sling Sammy? That is Sammy Bow. Played 16 seasons with Washington. He's a Hall of Famer, two-time champion, four first-team All-Pro, four second-team All-Pro, six-time pole board, four-time passing yards leader, two-time passing TDs leader, three-time passer rating leader, Eight-time completion percentage leader, five-time NFL punting average leader. Yeah, he played quarterback and punting, folks. He's a one-time punting yards leader, one-time NFL interceptions leader. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, played defense, played everywhere on the field. Made the Washington Ring of Fame, and guys are retired in Washington, folks. His stats, folks, were quarterback first. is 56.5 completion percentage, 187 passing TDs, 203 interceptions. Not great. Not great for that. 21,886 passing yards, 72.2 pass rating. His punting stats, folks, he had 338 punts and 45.1 punting average. He was the first NFL quarterback to make the four pass as a key component to his game and as many to the game. He was the first guy to do that in, as an NFL quarterback. He passed away in 2008, rest in peace. The things that stick out to me with Sammy Bowie, and I talked about him last season on the GOAT series, was his competitiveness, intelligent. Threw a bit like a gunslinger out there if you look at those 203 interceptions. Very adaptable excellence of just seeing the visionary and he had great arm strength, but seeing the feel of how he wants to go, whether it change the plays, especially on punting too or playing defense. He would just go through it, whether it was quarterback, punting, or defense, folks. Play everywhere as a mentioned for all over the field. Had great accuracy too. I would say that. I mean, 45.1 punting average is pretty good. But also quarterback-wise, I mean, that is pretty good given the modern day time. I mean, I get the completion percentage is a bit low, and so are the TDs and the interception ratios way off and some of the passing yards. But that's how it was back in the day because a lot of the NFL teams back in that day ran the ball a lot more, and it would be so many interceptions way back then. Like, you look at the old guys way back in that day, they still have some of the records, of, especially for most interceptions in their entire career. That's insane and probably would never get broken to this day, even though we're very pass-heavy era right now in football. And the big thing that, again, that really sticks out to me with Sammy Bell is really his accuracy and his vision and adaptability. Those are the three things that really stick out to me, especially the adaptability of him playing all over the field. You need him on offense, he'll throw the ball. You need him on defense, he'll intercept it. You need him on punt, he's got a good punt with that 45.1 punting average. Those are the kind of things, if he plays all the field, he's doing a pretty solid job at each of those uh, positions the defense offense and special teams so that has to get recognized on my list folks that definitely has to next on my list is joe theisman played 12 seasons for washington he's a one-time super bowl champion one-time mvp one-time offensive player of the year one-time nfl man of the year one first team all pro that was one time two-time pro board in the washington ring of fame his stats folks he had a 56.7 completion percentage 160 passing tds 
138 interceptions, 77.4 pass rate, 18 comebacks, 22 game-winning drives. And the big thing that really everyone knows about Joe Seisman is he was forced to retire due to a broken leg caused by Lawrence Taylor in the big game many years ago, and that ended his career. I think it was a Monday night football game, if I'm correct. And he was he just couldn't come back from the injury. It was awful watching it, just awful seeing the highlights of that, just pretty awful. So the three things that stick out to me with Joe Theismann is his accuracy, his clutch, and vocal presence being a great leader before his career ended. Those are three things that stick out to me. Again, with the accuracy, I get that his completion percentage was low, but that's how it was back in the day because as I mentioned before with Sling Sammy, it was a lot of running back in that day, a lot of running. And he had more passing, he had a better touchdown interception ratio than Sling Sammy too. That makes it better for you. And he has 77.4 pass rate. So that's just some of the things that stick out to me. I think Joe Theismann has to get recognized on this list, folks. He just has to, especially helping Washington build a franchise. And he was very involved in the community, too, like winning the NFL Man of the Year. He was very active. And I definitely think he has to get recognized on the list here, folks. I think he has to do something. But Joe Theismann here is my candidate. Last one on the list before I get to my ultimate goat is Daryl Green. Daryl Green played 20 seasons for the Commanders. He played quarterback, folks, CB. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion. One time NFL man of the year, four first team all pro, seven, seven Pro Bowls. He had the most consecutive seasons with an interception, which was 19. So pretty much almost his entire career, he at least had one interception, folks. His stats, folks, to give it to you, he had 54 interceptions, 33 passes defended, five forced fumbles, 10 fumble recoveries, 1,202 combined total tackles. Now, things that really stick out about Daryl Green's game is he had great speed. Ability to read the offenses of knowing what's the play looking like, what's the scheme going, and where should he be going to see where the ball is going to go, throw down the field, and make a play on that. He was very good at that. He was a very good shutdown corner. He shut down those opposing offenses, especially those receivers. And Green's success, he was a shutdown corner. And his presence on the field just feared opposing offense. They feared, especially those number one receivers, especially the number one receivers. But Daryl Green's success on the field was due to part of how his work ethic and his commitment to excellence. He would not stop and just work, 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 work until he got better every day to improve himself and as to improve himself as a player and a person too. But Daryl Green's success on the field was due to the part of his Tyler's work ethic and his commitment to excellence. He would be working, 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 not going out and partying. He'd just be working, working, working the whole time. And he proved to be one of the best CBs of all time especially for Washington, especially. and Helped them win the Super Bowl, too. He was a big part of that Super Bowl run. He was a big part of that. And has to be, has to be recognized on this list, folks. He has to be. And now we get to my ultimate Washington Commanders GOAT. Comes down to two players for me, folks. Comes down to Sling Sammy, Sammy Bow, and Daryl Green. Daryl Green played more seasons. He dominated his position more than Sling Sammy. But Sling Sammy, he played different positions. And that's something hard to do when you got, find a guy that can play three different positions where Daryl Green played one position. But Sling Sammy, he was all right at his positions, all right. Not the quarterback-wise, he was pretty good. Punting, he was very solid, I would say that. So I give him the edge of playing multiple positions. But Daryl Green was a shutdown CB and dominated his position and is argued and was argued in the last season of being one of the top CBs of all time, folks. I think I have to give it Daryl Green here, folks, just because, I mean, again, shutdown, domination, he had his position, but also was very involved in the community. Now, it's not to go against Sammy Bow, but he won the NFL Man of the Year. But the stats prove it a little bit here, and Daryl Green was a hardworking athlete. Now, again, slaying Sammy had that too. I think Daryl Green really struck the fear into opposing offense and dominated more and was very involved and a great guy on and off the field and won multiple awards. And it was a big part of that Super Bowl run way back then. So I'm going to have to give it Daryl Green here, folks. My ultimate Washington Commanders GOAT is Daryl Green, ladies and gentlemen, Daryl Green. But that's all I got here, folks. Let me know in the chat, who do you think is the ultimate Washington Commanders GOAT and who should have been recognized on this list, who should have been honorable mention in the list more? Let me know, folks, so I can hear them and then debate them bits here. But that's my list here of who I have honorable mention through the list. Great set of players. Rest in peace to the uh, players that passed away, sadly. But Daryl Green is my ultimate Watch the Commanders GOAT, folks. And stay tuned for our next episode, which we still continue in the NFC East as we head to New York Giants. So stay tuned for that, folks. Stay tuned for that. 
that's a wrap for this video, folks. See you next time. Have a great day. Enjoy summer.